Hey everyone, this is Jen Lusinger, and I chose to do my report on the fentanyl infusion of a critically ill patient. A roommate notified EMS about his 26-year-old male roommate who was found with an altered mental status on the couch when he returned to the apartment. Upon arrival to the hospital, the patient was found to be obtunded with a GCS of 8 and was emergently intubated. Unfortunately, there's no family present to provide any past medical, surgical, or familial history, but the roommate was able to report a recent history of IV drug abuse and voluntary cessation of an inpatient rehab facility within the last week. Pertinent labs for this patient are as follows. White blood cell count, 19,000, hemoglobin, 9.9, Lactate 3.7, creatinine 1.69, CK 372, troponins 11.9. His urine tox screen was positive for opiates and amphetamines, and his LFTs were within defined parameters. The diagnostics that were done upon arrival were a head CT and a 2D echo. The head CT showed multiple infarctions to the right frontal, temporal, and cerebellar regions with a small subarachnoid hemorrhage in the superior right parietal region and a 3 millimeter right to left midline shift. The T2D echo indicated severe aortic regurgitation with vegetation and possible leaflet perforation. Within a few days of admission, the patient was able to have an MRI of the brain and that later showed an increased shift of 7.5 millimeters and possible findings indicative of cerebritis and multiple abscesses bilaterally secondary to endocarditis. Patient's vital signs on the critical care unit were as follows. Heart rate of 92, blood pressure 137 over 78, respiratory rate 2 over the vent rate of 16, oxygen saturation on 35% FiO2 is 99%, and a core temp of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Physical exam during a sedation vacation. The patient opens eyes to noxious stimuli. He does not track or follow commands. He withdraws and moves all four extremities spontaneously. Pupils are equal, round, and reactive to light with a sluggish reaction at 3 millimeters bilaterally. Patient has sinus rhythm on the monitor without any ectopy. His rhythm and rate are regular with a grade 4 systolic murmur. Pedal and radial pulses are 2 plus on palpation. There is mild dependent edema noted to bilateral lower extremities. Lungs are coarse throughout. He breathes spontaneously over the vent rate. There are no retractions or asymmetry noted. The abdomen is soft, non-tender with active bowel sounds and skin remains intact and warm without rashes or discoloration. Once this patient arrived to the intensive surgical care unit, he was initiated on fentanyl and Versed drips. Fentanyl is a synthetic opioid agonist that promotes analgesia as well as sedation. The indications for fentanyl are agitation, anxiety, confusion, pain that can be secondary to immobility or trauma. The benefits, rapid onset, short half-life with rapid recovery, and as stated before, analgesia and sedative effects. Another benefit of fentanyl infusion is that there's no renally excreted metabolites, which means it's good for the patient who has renal impairment. Contraindications for a fentanyl infusion are few and far between. If the patient had a hypersensitivity reaction in the past, then the clinician should look for an alternative analgesic in this situation. Also, if the patient was taking MAOIs, that should too be avoided. Since fentanyl is metabolized by the CYP450 system, it is very important for the provider to be cognizant of any CYP inducers and especially inhibitors. Um, medications that are also metabolized and used frequently in the ICU environment by the CYP450 system are fluconazole, diltiazem, ciprofloxacin, erythromycin, rifampin, 
Nematop, Nifedipine, and Amiodarone. When monitoring a patient on a fentanyl infusion being utilized for analgesia and sedation, it is imperative to monitor the liver function. Since it is metabolized through the CYP450 system, if there are elevated LFTs, this could lead to lead to increased plasma levels and prolonged duration of action. Also, on the nursing front, it is very important to monitor if the patient is continuing to receive the benefits of the infusion, since adverse effects occur with prolonged administration. One of the ways people do this on the unit are through the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale. Without appropriate analgesia in the ICU environment, the humoral response may be triggered and result in an influx of catecholamines, glucagon, and cortisol, resulting in a higher consumption of oxygen, elevated blood sugars, hypercatabolism of lipids and proteins, fluid retention, and renal clearance of potassium. There are many adverse effects of a fentanyl infusion in the ICU environment. Nausea and vomit, vomiting is seen very often. This is a result of stimulation of the chemoreceptor trigger zone in the medulla. Also, a prolonged fentanyl infusion is known to decrease respiratory drive. This is secondary to MU2 receptor saturation, which is directly responsible for respiratory drive. The disadvantage here is that patients requiring elevated use or prolonged use of fentanyl infusions are less likely to get off the mechanical ventilator because their drive will be diminished. Delayed gastric emptying and constipation are also very common adverse effects. This is because nociceptive stimuli binding to the opioid receptors are lo located specifically in the GI tract. Bradycardia, vasodilation, and hypotension are also seen often, and this is a result of stimulation of the vagal nucleus. In regards to monitoring these adverse effects, antiemetics can be administered PRN. In regards to the decreased respiratory drive, the patient could be weaned off fentanyl and placed on an additional or alternative analgesic or just weaned off entirely to see if there's any improvement in the patient's respiratory drive so that they can move forward with the weaning process. Delayed gastric emptying and constipation are typically managed with stool softeners and laxatives as needed and also on a scheduled basis until they are fairly regular. And bradycardia, vasodilation, hypotension, depending on the severity of the response, may need to be reversed with Narcan, um, or the patient may even need to be placed on vasopressor support. However, sometimes it could just be a, um, could just be rectified by decreasing the amount of the fentanyl infusion. Two severe adverse events that have been known to occur as a result of prolonged fentanyl infusion are chest wall rigidity and coma. The mechanism for chest wall rigidity is unclear. However, the patient will exhibit decreased chest compliance and make it increasingly difficult to provide assistive ventilation. Management of this is to promptly wean off fentanyl, administer Narcan, and initiate an alternative analgesic only if needed. Coma has also been known to occur in patients with prolonged fentanyl infusions and concomitant meds that are CYP3A4-5 inhibitors. Management is very similar to chest wall rigidity in that you have prompt weaning of the fentanyl drip, reversal agent, and add alternative analgesia if indicated. Fentanyl drips have shown to be very beneficial for the critically ill vent-dependent ICU patient. However, there are indications and benefits that should be evaluated daily due to the adverse events that have been proven to occur 
secondary to prolonged infusions. Close monitoring of vital signs, liver function tests, and potential for medication interactions should continuously be a focus for the clinician in this environment. As always with analgesia and critically ill patients, weaning should also be a goal once stability has been achieved.